thought this one was a really good one uh, by Luis. So I'm going to read it here. It's a couple paragraphs here, but uh, it sets it up really well. So Luis says, I coach both uh, USMS and USA swimming teams in Washington, DC. I've been conducting dry land workouts for our USMS team three times per week, immediately before our pool workouts since September, as that was the only time we could schedule. And I've been keeping our stretching movements dynamic to avoid static stretching ahead of other activities requiring movement and power. The USMS team members are mostly over 60 years old, some closer to 80. That's awesome. And many have mobility challenges, not surprising. The program I'm offering, thanks to your guidance, uh, is definitely helping to improve that, but it seems they could also benefit from some guided, static, deeper stretching. How much time is enough of a separation for athletes to do static stretching ahead of other active workouts? Is one hour enough, two hours, several hours? Would it be the same for elders and the youngsters? I'm inclined to change it up next season to conduct one of the three dryland workouts after pool workouts, or more likely necessarily to go earlier in the day due to scheduling, so they can go do some deeper stretching, but I want to be sure it isn't diminishing their ability or mobility in the water. I haven't found the answer to this timing question in the literature and thought you might be able to address it. Should I ever be, should I even be concerned about this or am I off base? Just trying to keep everything safe and moving in the right direction. Thanks. Uh, he says, I wish I could join the call on Tuesday, but he's actually coaching on deck. So Luis, hope your session is going well. This was a great question. And honestly, when I, very early on, I think when I was still uh, in my undergrad for kinesiology, this question came up really early and I actually struggled with it too, Louise. So don't feel bad at all. And you are not off base thinking through this. So here's how I've evolved over time with this in particular. So there is very clear research that if you do deep static stretching, and we're talking, you know, holding like a deep hamstring static stretch for minutes on end. And then right after, if you ask that athlete to then go sprint a hundred meters or do a long jump or, or something else explosive, there is diminishing return in that. On the other hand, if like Luis says here, you know, most of his clientele that he's working with, the master members are 60 years and up sometimes in their eighties. So how my brain thinks about it and the hierarchy, because you, you need to have a hierarchical order, I think, of how you look at these issues that you come up with in, when it comes to dry land training. And I think it even kind of goes into swim training as well, is what's the most important thing? So for your clientele, Luis, I would say mobility is by far the most important thing, because even if there is a diminishing amount of power that's going to kind of dissipate once they get into the workout, probably 30 minutes or less in, once they probably go through that warm up set, whatever you have for them in the water, that effect has probably diminished a good amount. And let's say it hasn't by 15, 20 minutes, and it still takes another 10, 20 minutes to diminish. That minute percentage of power that they lost is negligible compared to the mobility gains that you could have. So Luis, for your circumstance in particular, I say, yes, go for static stretching. Now, what you get into then is making sure you are adequate, adequately warming them up, raising their core body temperature, especially if you said, uh, making sure I remember right, you're doing uh, these uh, dynamic movements before, that's right. And so you were thinking of maybe having one post, but even if you're doing it pre, here's how I would think about it, especially for master swimmers is, let's do five to 10 minutes of just dynamic warm up, you know, lunges, single leg deadlifts. You can go through the YouTube page. There's many uh, varieties of dynamic warm ups that we have available. And then probably take another, uh, I forget how long you said the sessions were. Uh, I don't think you said Louise, how long? So let's just say it's 30 minutes. So I would do 10 minutes of dynamic warm up just to raise the core body temperature. Then I would do 10 minutes of static stretching slash mobility, especially for the master swimmers focusing on uh, shoulders, probably thoracic uh, mobility and, and hip mobility as well, maybe some hamstring uh, in there too. So 10 minutes dynamic, 10 minutes static, and then the last 10 minutes, you could almost go back to dynamic a little bit because that will lessen the effect that you have post static stretching. But it, again, it will get them ready to then jump in the water and be not only warmed up, but you've done your static stretching. So I would do a little bit of a mix 
and also just pull your athletes to see how they're feeling. Again, these are older clientels where we're talking 60, 70, 80 years old. So mobility for me is probably the number one thing outside of just raising their core temperature before we hit the water. That would be a concern of mine. I'm not worried about a uh, one or a couple percentage power going down because we static stretch, if that gives them better hip mobility or just being able to use their hamstrings better, being able to move their shoulder better through the water, I take all of that over a 10% or less drop in power because we did some deep static stretching. So don't think of that static stretching as so much the boogeyman, but you can also take it too far. So too far to me would be if we're now counting into three, four, five minutes holding a stretch, I usually say, make sure, well, we're two rules of stretching, right? We got to breathe and we got to be smiling. So make sure they're doing that. So we know we're in a good range. And then if I'm thinking about, you know, a, a deep hamstring stretch, I'd have them maybe hold that for one, maybe two minutes and then move on to something else. You also have to think about the frequency of them doing the stretching. So you doing the stretching from 30 seconds to a minute to two minutes, it, I don't think it makes that much of a difference if you're just doing it one time there before they get in the water. What would make a better difference is dialing it back to maybe just holding it for 30 seconds or 60 seconds, but having them do it before the workout, after the workout, then maybe they do that again before they go to bed. And maybe you help them. And this is why we do assessments when we onboard teams and, and clients is making sure that you know the few areas you really need to work on. And so for senior uh, master swimmers, maybe someone really has you know some tight hamstrings or maybe a lot of restrictions in their shoulders or thoracic. Have them just focus on that area and take five minutes before they go to bed, when they wake up in the morning, before they get in the water, after they get out of the water. And it's the same thing with age group senior and college swimmers as well. It's just master swimmers, the ad adaptation is going to take a lot longer. So that's why I would focus, Luis, more on frequency of it. So I know I talked there, I'll try to sum up uh, all my thoughts here, Luis, for you succinctly and for the other coaches listening is static stretching. Yes, it definitely has a place, especially if you know you have athletes that have limitations in their mobility. So make sure you incorporate that somehow. If it's just practice time, don't worry that much about the power uh, going down a couple percentage points. It's not going to matter that much in practice. I would rather get the gains from the mobility and more importantly, it's the frequency of that mobility, build that into their natural rhythm. And it's going to take a few weeks, even a few months, sometimes maybe even years to really get to where you want, depending on a lot of other factors. So hope that answered your question, Luis, uh, feel free to either, if you can join us on the next call or throw a comment in, in the community so we can see uh, how that helped.